Um, hi, everyone. My name is Janice, and I work at the Port Environment Center along with my colleague, Emma. Some of you may have met either one of us or both of us. Um, but um, today, I'm going to be running through this session. Um, and before we dive into the session, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're gathering on the traditional lands of the Ghana people. Um, we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and extend the respect to all Aboriginal and Tor Torres Strait Islander people present with us today. And I also welcome all of you. So thank you for joining us today. Some of you have already heard or you're aware of the Port Environment Center, whereas some of you may have not yet visited us. So I'm gonna introduce a little bit about the center. Uh, so we are a community eco hub and we're located in Port Adelaide. Um, we are here to support and guide you um, with greening and sustainable projects. We organize events, activities, and we also support the community, the local groups in the community with whatever project that they're doing or running. Um, and if you haven't yet stopped by the center, um, yeah, you, we do have lots of resources to share. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have uh, any questions or if you'd like any assistance. Um, the Port Environment Center is funded by Green Adelaide. Um, the Inner Street project was initially started and funded by the City of Port Adelaide Enfield Partnership Grant. And now it continues to be supported under the Susan Elliott Charitable Trust. And as we all have heard of the Inner Street project, some of you perhaps have attended today, um, you know, with the trying to understand what you could be doing in your community. Um, or if you've already started a project, you'd like to learn new ideas or way that you could improve your own community project, or simply would like to just connect with other like-minded individuals. Well, um, we do have some great street champions who are gonna be talking to us today. Uh, although we could not have everyone here today, but we do have some, they're gonna be sharing the experiences. Um, it is still a perfect opportunity for you to ask questions and to interact with us so that we can support you better. So the Inner Street project is a framework um, that helps to bring neighbors together to build sustainable com connected communities. It's all about setting small achievable goals and working on environmental projects that make our streets greener, kinder, and more su supportive places to live in. We have created a range of resources to assist you in your journey, including the Inner Streets Handbook, uh, the street champions templates. We do have examples of other projects or other street champions and also some useful videos. Um, yeah, if you haven't yet had a chance to look at some of these resources, I'd suggest yeah, they're all on our website. And that's something that would help you in planning uh, a community project. And they are free for everyone to use or to share with others, um, you know, in your community or your neighbors as well. Um, you will also notice that we've collected some stories of people who are doing amazing community projects in the neighborhood. These are there to look at and be inspired. Most of these projects have already been developed before the Inner Street Framework came about, um, but we have gathered them together as a way of showing what is possible or just so that you get, get some more ideas to be inspired. Um, and I, like I said, they're free for everyone to use. So please, uh, you could, you know, circulate them around as well. Um, I also wanted to mention that we are now ready to auspice the groups um, that might need some support. So for example, if um, there are any groups that would like to apply for grants that require auspicing from an incorporated organization, such as Support Environment Center, um, I can give you an example. So for example, you, the auspicy, will carry out the project and we, the incorporated um, auspicer, will receive the project funding and we can assist you with the allocation, the spending um, of the project funding uh, according to a mutual agreement. And although we do have some conditions to these, we would be happy for you to reach out and ask us about this as well. Now, um, Excited to introduce um, our panel of the three street champions that we have with us today. Uh, so we have Julie, Yesha, and Jess with us here today. Um, I'm not sure if Jess has already joined in, but she did mention that she would be coming in a bit late. Um, these individuals have already taken a lead in their neighborhoods and have done some 
and have some incredible stories to share. So I will ask each speaker questions and they will tell us about their journey. And then we'll open the floor uh, to ask others, uh, like to ask questions. Um, so maybe you can start thinking about the questions that you want to ask as you keep uh, listening along. Uh, so you can either put that in the chat, um, but if you've not found the chat, uh, uh, you would just want to unmute yourself and ask the question directly towards the end uh, after the speaker finishes uh, talking. Yeah, that's fine as well. Um, all right, so I think I can stop talking now uh, so that you can actually hear from the street champions about their projects. Um, so let's hear from our first street champion, Julie. Um, Julie, welcome. And tell us, what is your street project about? Hang on, Julie. Sorry, you're on mute. There we go. Right. All sorted. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mute it, so I couldn't find where it was. Um, hello, everybody. My name's Julie. Um, our street project it was that I live in Newport, which is actually, um, as most of you would know if you're familiar with it, a very condensed um, form of housing. And we all found that um, you see people every day, much more than you do when you live in a street. So we decided after COVID that we would support each other in whatever way we could. One of our things that we spoke about when we got together um, was that people would like one of these little libraries, which you can see in the photo. Um, so I was given the task of obtaining one, which then the gentlemen that um, were helping me, they uh, dug the hole, put the concrete in, and um, I just watched. But, yeah, that was supplied by the council to us. But it did take a little while, probably took me 18 months to get that um, box eventually delivered but it's beautiful and it fits really well for us because we have an indigenous garden and this is to the side of the garden so a lot of people come they read about the black swans that used to inhabit the area they read the history of La Chalere and her descendants um, and then they pop over and grab a book so it's um it's been very very popular so popular that we're going to try and get some more that's amazing, Julie. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I'm sure lots of um, many of us listening now would be like, if I want to do something like this, you know, how can I start a project like this? So can you briefly tell us what prompted you to start something like this? What prompted me was that um, during COVID, um, I had lived in my apartment for about six years. So I was fairly familiar with the people on my floor, which is just seven apartments, but didn't really know their names or too much about them, but I knew a couple had come from interstate. So the first day of lockdown, I did some little notes and just popped them in everybody's letterbox. Um, I felt that putting it under their door was a bit intrusive. So I popped them in their letterboxes and just introduced myself, left my phone number, said, you know, I've lived here for a while. Um, I do have family in the area, so I'm able to assist if anyone who doesn't have family gets sick or anything. Um, perhaps we can help you with food deliveries that, you know, might be different to just the normal things you can order from the supermarket. Um, and everybody came back with, a, they all put a note back in my letterbox saying, thank you, giving me their phone numbers. Um, and from that, we started having little get-togethers. We have a restaurant in one of the buildings here, um, Portobello's, and they very courageously started doing the takeaway meals as soon as they were allowed to. So we could ring up and order or we could order online and then people would go downstairs and there would be little clusters of people <laughs> waiting to pick up their food. And from that, we got people from the townhouses, people from other buildings, people from the area who didn't live in Newport. And it just became obvious that people were really wanting to reach out to people more. Um, I've lived in several different types of housing in the country, um, in North Adelaide, um, at Finden here, um, and in normal housing where it's single, single um, residences. And 
I noticed that it, it was very different, that people really wanted to connect with each other. Like it's, you know, quite often everybody's busy and they've got their head down and they don't look at you, but everybody was actually taking the time to look around and try and make a conversation. Um, and even little things like waiting to pick up your food, you know, they, they found something in common with each other. So from that, we then started a um, neighbours gathering. It's called Neighbours Day. We do it once a month and we hold it at the restaurant because the restaurant owner has been kind enough to offer us drink specials, which um, if it, in the beginning it got people to come, but now people just come and they don't really care whether there's any drink specials or not. Um, and it just means for new people to the area, they get a little bit of a, a feel for Port Adelaide. And, and I like to think that we've always been a friendly suburb, but this really shows it. Um, yeah. And we have yeah. all ages, so you know, people with children, um, young people, young couples, single people, um, and it's it's interesting that they're from all walks of life and and they all bring something to it. So they were very happy with the little library, um, and I, I wasn't aware that you if you approach the council, the nice ladies on the council reception desk are a wealth of knowledge and they know who does what, who's in charge of, you know, this and that, and they put me onto the right people. So that was terrific. And then another thing that came from our chat um, in our monthly meetings or not meetings or gatherings really, um, was that people would like some sort of community garden, which is very hard to do here because we just don't really have any space. We've got lots of green, lots of grass, lots of, um, bushes, all the apartment buildings are surrounded by um, rosemary. So lots of rosemary for cooking your lamb, um, but not much else. So from that, in conjunction with the restaurant, there are eight trees in huge containers, great big concrete containers that the council is responsible for. And I've now done a deal with them that I am now responsible <laughs> For making sure that we look after the not not the actual tree, the tree's not ours to worry about, um, and they're fully grown trees, so they're fine. But in the base of the tree, we have decided to put some herbs of different kinds. So we've got parsley and we've got basil. Um, we're going to put some mint in, but as everybody knows, mint goes crazy and takes over everything. So mint's going to have to live on its own. Um, but it's lovely. And the, the um, restaurant owner has supplied a lot of the, the goods for that, the, a lot of seeds and um, some, I don't know what you call it, like fertilised soil mix that we needed. Um, and the rest of it, we've just gone with what's there. And different people come along and they stick a little succulent or something in there. And it's really getting to be another part where it's between two big concrete buildings it's on concrete, the tubs are big concrete things, but they're full of this beautiful greenery that's edible. And, you know, everybody's popping down and having a, instead of buying a bunch of parsley and then having to throw most of it out, you just go down and grab a couple of strands of it and off you go. So That's that's great to hear. And also the connections that you've made through this. Um, yeah, it's amazing just to hear that. And um, now that you have the street library and you're planning a few things, like what are the other things that you have planned with your neighbours ahead? Do you have some ideas that you'd like to do? Um, we do, but it's, it's lots of things that are, you know, probably quite difficult. I'm actually looking at um, retiring from my job at uh, the end of December. So I'm hoping I'm going to have a little bit more time to put together some things. Because everybody's keen and everybody's interested, but not everyone has the confidence to go out and ask questions from government or from the council. Whereas I don't mind. I'm more than happy to, to you know, sound silly and say, who do I need to talk to? Um, but one of the other offshoots from this is that we found that the people from the groups have made other groups. So we have a group of men who all go and watch rugby together. So I don't know that, you know, rugby's not a huge um, popular sport here in Adelaide, but 
these men are from, some are from New Zealand, some are from the UK, and they all have this common interest. And so now they go into the city, they find a sports bar, they have a day out or an evening out. Their wives then go to a fancy restaurant and have a really fancy dinner and invite the rest of us along if we want to come. Um, They've done a couple of trips interstate. So it's really nice that we probably have a regular group of about 30 people that come to these little gatherings. But from that, we've got three or four groups of five or six or 10 people. Some people go to shows. Some people go to musicals. Um, Quite often the chat around the table is what's the movie on at the Odeon? And, you know, and, and the men all go, oh, we don't want to go to that. So one of the women says, right, I'll organise a group. Who wants to come? And, you know, the women go off and watch a, a movie together. So it's a really nice way that we're just sort of branching out further and further. Being right on the river, we've got um, the dolphins, obviously. We've got our lovely resident dolphin rocket. So I'm kind of hoping that we might be able to get a little bit more information around the river um, and that's kind of one of my pet things that I'm going to start next year is some more sign boards that explain things about the dolphins. We did have a sign up around the river that said, you know, dolphins resting, uh, mother and calf, be careful. The current one says, dolphins do not approach, do not feed. <laughs> and it's quite quite a harsh one. Um, and I just thought we could probably do a bit better and have a little bit of history about the dolphins in the river. Um, because I've been here a long time and um, it's quite it's really interesting stuff that that is part of our life it's part of my life every day every day I go for a walk with my dog at least twice a day and I see these beautiful animals swimming in their natural habitat Um, and we need to make sure that other people understand how to look after them and how to protect them so it's there will be more next year. There will be more things happening. Um, we're still looking for another space to put some sort of a veggie garden in, but it's hard. We we haven't got very nice soil here, so whatever we do has to be done in containers. So oh, um, I'm, yeah, I'm so happy to hear how these small ideas have taken ahead, and it's still you know guiding you and taking you along. Um, I do have one last question for you. Um, and I'm sure everyone would like to hear that as well. Um. So what's your favourite part of this street project? Um, and this is a bit of a heads up for the other speakers as well, because I'm going to ask you and you can start thinking. But uh, we can start with you, Julie. What's your favourite part, the thing that you love about your street project? The thing I love about it is that people people constantly um, comment on the little library. They say, oh, this is fabulous. And that's where they've said we need more. Um, but they also, they they have that as a common thing that they chat about. And it just seems to have made people feel more, more able to approach each other because there's this little box and it's got books in it and you can go and have a look and, you know, chat about them. Um, and we even sometimes see people coming into the restaurant and they've been and got a book to have a look at, you know, while they're waiting for someone to turn up. So um, I think it's just the connection. I'm, I'm a people person and I love the fact that not everybody is really confident to, you know, put themselves out there and say, you know, this is me, this is what I like and I would like a friend which is, you know, that's probably the hardest thing. Even We know that as kids, you know, little kids all stand there just watching each other and just try and join in. So that's what I'm really good at doing is getting people to join in. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the part I like, the connections. Yeah, thank you so much, Julie. Um, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. And on behalf of the listening audience, yeah, it's great to know a street champion. I'm sure we picked up an idea or two um, that's useful to us as well. Um, if any of you have any questions, uh, you can either put that in the chat or we can go uh, to the questions even towards the end after we have all the three speakers. So um, I will now uh, introduce you our next speaker, who's Yesha. Um, welcome, Yesha. And thank you for joining us uh, all the way from Washington, D.C. Um, for others who do not know, but it's 4.30 a.m. in the morning over there. And we do have Yesha, who's so dedicated with her time. Um, so I can't wait to hear more about your project and your work. Um, 
So Yesha, tell us about what you did as your street project here when you were here in South Australia. Well, hi. Um, good evening, everyone. It's so great to join you. And I think I hope that this is a good example of the fact that I'm literally happy to talk about, you know, community projects and native protecting native plants and native species at any point in time. So um, 4.30 a.m. for me is great. Um, it is four o'clock here, by the way, but it's great to be here. Um, community project for me uh, was really a combination of um, combining the power of art uh, as a way to connect people um, to the issues that are often too hard to explain or too complex to explain. You know, how do you explain to someone that we're facing an extinction crisis, extinction crisis um, that will see, you know, ecological collapse without it sort of sounding or doom and gloom? Um, and so, you know, for me, it was really a project about putting forward um, a way to kind of highlight the fact that we have more than a thousand native species that are at risk of going extinct here in South Australia um, if we don't turn the ship around. Um, and there are so many reasons why these native species are at risk. Um, there's, of course, native vegetation loss, there's biodiversity loss, um, there's development laws that completely disregard the impact on our flora and fauna. Um, and so for me, I really wanted to have, you know, a neighbourhood that's a biodiversity hotspot for native wildlife. And I wanted kids um, in my neighbourhood to really get excited about spending time in nature, really connecting with everything that nature has to offer. Um, so to kind of kick things off, I collaborated with Campbelltown Art House, just a fabulous and a fantastic group of local artists. And we ran a series of workshops with local kids, their families, the wider community to really kick off a uh, exciting dialogue about what it means to protect native habitats and our wild places. And right now, if you were to head down to Reed Avenue in Hectorville, you can see some of these species, like unique Indigenous plants that are often not seen in the wildlife, um, because I've definitely not seen them in my neighbourhood. Um, but you can see them on the Stobie poles um, as a way to kind of tell people that there are amazing species uh, to get excited about and to protect um, on Stroby poles. And we also encourage local residents to adopt a birch um, and plant some native vegetation in their streets. That was kind of like the phase two. So I kind of see the project in like two phases. The first was to highlight all the pro you know, all the amazing species, put them on a Stroby pole so people can see them um, and also see what's at risk. And then phase two of the project was to get um, people to adopt a birch. So I really loved uh, bringing people together who are creative, um, with nature lovers, uh, to create this sense of community and also just showcase that um, there are things that people really value here. You know, we value our green spaces and, uh, you know, our nature is something that should absolutely be protected and it um, should be preserved for nature, you know, for future generations. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And it's wonderful to hear that you had an opportunity to interact with diverse groups, whether it's young kids or, you know, uh, the adults as well. Uh, and I'm sure as you were doing that, you must have faced a lot of challenges. If you don't mind sharing some of those challenges that you faced while you were working through these projects. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for first of all, Campbelltown Council had zero information for me. I remember talking to um, or putting forward my proposal to the council and um, the amazing Tracy and I think her name is Sophie, the two people who kind of worked with community groups at the Campbelltown Council and they gave me a call. They were like, we love your idea. Um, we're so excited about this idea, but we have no idea how to kick it off because we have no information for you. There were no guidelines. She's like, we're going to have to actually develop some guidelines because, of course, um, Sobe polls come under the jurisdiction of SA Power Network. You also need to get approvals from the council to use public spaces and public lands for community purposes. And so there was really no information for the council to provide me with, you know, what I could do to really uh, start things off. So I spoke to my wonderful friend, Tracy, who works at, well, who, she doesn't work at the council, but she works in coalition with the city of Charles Sturt Council. Also my former council, I just want to give them a big shout out, who do amazing work there in the local area to kind of 
revegetate some of the uh, park spaces and community spaces. So I think for me, it was really about making sure that Campbelltown Council had all the information that they needed to kind of approve our project. And I provided all of that information over to them. And right now, Campbelltown Council actually has a fabulous website where people can go and check out how to kick off a community project, including Stroby Pole Painting. So it's really great. Good outcome. Yeah, so good that you could break down your project, you know, into different phases. Um, yeah, I would definitely like to know more about how you were doing that. So, for example, I'm sure you would have to manage your time and you'd have to have skills like project management skills. So how is it that you were balancing these things, trying to do different things? I mean, I think I don't have a project management um, like qualification as such, um, but I was working full time at um, at the time, and this is pre-COVID, um, and so it's working full time. Um, I probably dedicated about five to six hours to this project. Um, a lot of the hours were really spent on the weekend, though, um, just kind of prepping all of the information that I needed to provide to the council. Um, and then during the week, I would often liaise with FA Power Network just to kind of make sure that I had the information that, you know, I could provide to council about approvals for using uh, the Stroby poles to do a lot of that painting work um, and then collaborating and running the workshops on the weekends. Um, it was really great to be able to have kids um, come out and, you know, join our workshops and ask questions about, you know, what's this bird and what does it eat and how, what kind of habitat does it need? Um, so it's really wonderful to be able to, you know, have those conversations on the weekends. We also did a lot of door knocking in our neighbourhood on the weekend um, just to let people know that we would be out and about in the community and they could come along to uh, what I call the painting and planting day um, and making sure that people could join in and that it was really an open invitation to everyone. Um, I think when it comes to like prioritisation, um, for me, the biggest question is always, why am I doing this? You know, why is it important to let people know that there are more than a thousand species that are at risk of going extinct in our state or the fact that South Australia loses um, nearly 70,000 mature trees that are home to some of the most beautiful and iconic birds um, on the planet. Um, you know, we lose those trees every year. And so I think it's really about figuring out, you know, why are we doing this? Why is this really important? Um, and then kind of working from then. We wrapped up the project, I think, in about three months just before COVID-19 hit. So it was a good wrap up. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds so exciting. And coming to our last question, um, what's your favourite thing about this street project? Gosh, um, so many things. Uh, but I think two of my favourite things would probably be I'm going to say two because you just can't pick one. Um, two of my favourite things would probably be uh, kids coming together and really learning about, you know, birds, bees and butterflies and native plants and native wildlife and native wildflowers um, and really connecting with the issue. I remember I had one student, her name was Julie. I think she's, I'm hoping that she's in one of your um, slides or there's definitely a site that she's um in the photo in the photo with and so she you know she's a high school student she was an amazing artist um if you go down to Reed Avenue I really hope that you get to check out some of her work so she drew this beautiful emu burn it's a tiny tiny bird that's found um often in their foothills of Adelaide Hills and so um she got her you know she got the artwork painted and then she really wanted to get these native plants um, and native flowers to be planted right underneath the stroby pole so it was really great to be able to see the artwork complemented by a native bridge that had been you know put together so beautifully um, and I'd say the second thing is probably just how inspired people felt like I had people ringing the council or dropping me a message being like you know, how can we get involved um, when they saw the Stroby poles being painted and they saw the artwork being put up um, along Reed Avenue? Um, you know, people got excited. They were like, oh, I want this in my street. I want this in my neighbourhood. I want this outside my house. Um, so it was really wonderful to have people 
you know, see something they like and want to sort of get involved and make it happen in their own community. And so I think imagining the fact that we could really create these biodiversity hotspots and create environmental corridors for native wildlife, um, you know, it would just take one street to showcase um, what it would be like to have a strong environmental corridor for our wildlife and wild species, um, you know, to kind of get people together to really protect nature. Um, because I think when it comes to, you know, I often think about and a good example about protecting wildlife is, you know, in real estate, we use the term, um, it's all about location, location, location um, for us when we're looking for a home. Um, and it's the same for birds and animals. Um, so really empowering people to care about these species and give them a chance to thrive is probably one of my favourite things about the project. Thank you so much, Yesha, for making time to chat with us today. Um, I'm sure we have now, all of us are very impressed with your dedication and these experiences that you've shared with us. I'm sure we can use them as well. Um, it's now time to move on to our last speaker, um, who's Jess. Um, I think Jess has joined um, the video session. Um, just want to check if... Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, yep. <yeah. laughs> Hi, Jess. Um, it's so great to see you. Um, I just want to mention that Jess is one of our newest street champions. Um, so she's recently got her neighbors together. Um, so maybe let's start with um, um, how did you think of starting something like this in your neighborhood, Jess? Yeah. Um, so I follow the Port Environment Center on Instagram and things like that um, and was just looking into, I think I saw it come up in a post. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, at the same time, I was sort of putting out my feelers to all sorts of different community organisations because I'd only just moved to Semaphore in December this year or last year, sorry. Um, and I thought this could be a good opportunity for me to do something that I'm passionate about and also to um, meet my, my meet my neighbours and gain a sense of connection to the local area. Um, yeah, so that's I guess how I started. Yeah, how I started it, um, or why why I thought about starting it. Yeah, and how did you think of reaching out to, to your neighbours? How many neighbours did you have who joined your first session? If you want to share uh, that. Oh, I can't remember the exact number. I I should have kept a better record, to be honest. Oh, there is a record of it somewhere. Um, but I think we had about 30 people in the first um, meeting, which was really good. Uh, and um, since then, we've had the, the input of about 60 um, of our residents on our street. And the street has 60 houses, but the residents obviously might be multiple in the house. Yeah. Yeah, and it shows that people were keen to do something or take up something yeah. like this. So that's how you had such a good interest as well that came in. Yeah, I did notice that um, there were people in the street, like that you just notice in their gardens or they've got the climate action now signs up or something. So you just kind of suspect that people might be interested. Um, yeah, and so I sort of, sort of started very I, I was very nervous at the start um and just asking like the person across the road that moved in and clearly was very into um she like re was redoing the garden to be like fully um like native plants and stuff like that and um just suggested the idea to see what, what the response was like and she was really keen to help so that just gave me a little bit more confidence that I could go and and do like meet the rest of my neighbors and and put things in people's letterboxes and all that. Sure. And um, you did share this graph with us. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to talk about it a bit as to what is this about and how did it, you know, go ahead? Yeah, sure. So um, in our first meeting, we just kind of had a brainstorming session and, like, did a bit of a get to know you and then brainstorming. Um, lots of people were very keen on all sorts of different ideas and I told, like, we tried to prompt... Um, people to just think as big and as amazing as they, they could and forget about idea of budget and logistics and stuff just to have like a big dreaming session. Um, and so from that, I collated all the ideas um, and made a Google form. Um, I'm a teacher, so it's a bit of my teacher heart, teacher heart coming out there. Um, and and uh, 
then asked everyone in the street to um, do this and then they got to um, put in, sorry, my brain's just got this a little distracted. Um, she, so to put in how many people they were responding on behalf of, so then it could be weighted based on if that someone's by themselves or if there's someone responding on behalf of four residents. Um, and then I made it into a graph <laughs> um, because I'm a math teacher, so um, why not? Um, and, yeah, so that helped us to see a, sort of a clear direction of what people were interested in. Um, okay. Yeah, so the graph here um, on the left, it's the maximum number of people. So um, the highest, if, I'm going to look at the yellow ones because that's per survey response. Oh, no, wait. Yes, and then this is a, a I think this is a percentage. I'm, this isn't, yeah, anyway, so. Um, and so. Um, the, oh no, this is the yellow one is um, the number of people. So um, 60 is the, the highest we could get. And then for the first one, which was trees or verge gardens with um, concrete. So we had areas of our street that were quite uh, overwhelmed with concrete um, <laughs> in the verges and they don't have any, any green um, sort of part of the concrete for, there's a probably... 50 metres or so um, letters like that. And so that was clearly the most important to people in the street um, or the most something that they were most motivated towards um, changing. Um, yeah. And then all the way through um, down to like the, the smallest number that they could have got was um, 15 because of the scoring, the way it worked. Um, and one of them, uh, the we thought probably the lowest, even though people were still interested, um, was like an a art sculpture um, in the um, the park that's at the end of our street. Um, so there was a whole wide range of um, of suggestions, and I did that because I didn't want it to be me just putting my agenda on it. I really wanted it to be something that the community wanted to come together on. Um, mm -hmm. There's that's like that's how you get well one of the ways you can get a lot of a lot of buy-in is that if people have made the decisions themselves rather than me just coming in and saying okay guys we're going to make a verge garden um which I think still people would be keen for as you can see but um it takes a like different level of ownership yeah um, it's it's great that you could visually you know bring this together like all your teacher skills <laughs> is definitely seen here um, yeah, it makes it easier yeah to discuss with people or, or to yeah. share the ideas around so that's great and, and you don't have to do it like you definitely don't have to put it in a graph that's just something that I like to do um and it helped to communicate yeah later to the to the um group of about how how things were ranked so um, partway like down here we've got working bees partway through um, the interest kind of uh, which people um, at the start were really keen on but then when I guess when they've when it's been worked out across the whole of the street um, people were thought that um, dealing with our concrete section would be more more important and maybe a working bee would be part of that um, rather than just doing a working bee um, that was we were talking about doing that for people in the community that maybe don't have the ability to do stuff in their garden so um that might be future um yeah a future project rather than the first first priority try and get some green <laughs> in places that is mostly concrete yeah i mean it's so good to have you know the different priorities of what people would yeah. like and who knows, you might, you know, go in line and doing each of these things along the way. Yeah. So yeah, one idea might link to another. So it's good that yeah. you could have it all visually here. Um, yeah. And just coming to our last question, um, what's your favorite part of the street project so far? I know you've just started, but what has been the best experience for you so far? Yeah, so, so far we had our first meeting on the first weekend of spring, which I thought was very, um, very nice. So only just, just a few months and already, the street like is much more close and warm sort of to, 
to be in, in the in the sense that people know people's names. Um, there's a lot more like you talk to someone as you see them walking and like previously people would just say hi, but now it's like, hi, Ruth. And <laughs> um, um, you know people's dogs' names and stuff like that. Um, and we, through this, have also created a WhatsApp group. And so then we can do a lot of sharing of produce um, in, in through that and or use that as a bit of a notice board. Um, and me personally, on a very, I get just a self-focused um, level is I just feel like joy, just belonging in my street. Like if I was sitting out the front of my house, just look out and like, oh, I feel really like, like I belong here now, um, which is, yeah, very, very nice. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing with us. I know that, you know, that this has just started, but I'm sure it's going to, you know, go along and you're going to get, you're going to learn and even talk to other people as well. So it's going to uh, guide you along the way. Um, uh, so thank you so much for making time to talk to us today. I'm not sure if you might have enough time to um, go into the details of asking each of us equals questions, but we have made a note of them. Just want to check with Emma. Should I still go ahead and just um, talk about the inner street or do we have time to take some of the questions? Maybe I've been keeping an eye on the questions and just a couple that are probably quick that, you know, either Yesha, Julie or Jess might like to respond to. Maybe just one of you if it feels like you. You know, there's one question here and I think it's a really interesting point. Um, someone's saying, you know, I'm a bit of a shy person, but, you know, how do you feel like for a lot of people and that would be pretty common this thought of reaching out to brand new people and kind of starting something feels big you know any advice um oh um I would say that I would relate to that um I am quite happy to get amongst it but to be the leader of something I feel very weird putting my hand up for that um but to get like one or two people just to if you float the idea um like then all of a sudden there's a bit of buzz <laughs> because um when you then when we go and drop a drop something in someone's letterbox when I did it I did it on like a middle of the day during the week on a day that I had off that was like super quiet because I was really scared people would see me drawing <laughs> like I was so nervous at the start and, um I was like oh maybe they'll hate that I put something in their letterbox um but then once I'd done that and a few people had messaged me saying they're really keen, it just really like bolstered the confidence um, and between myself and, and the neighbours that were keen, they helped to like get the buzz and the, you know, the the um, word on of word of mouth kind of movement behind it too. Yeah, I love that. And I know there was another in our street group that's kicked off in Semaphore Park probably a couple of years ago now. And I went along, I was lucky enough to go along to their first gathering um, and, you know, the lady that was really keen on driving it and has done lots of that initially reached out just to a few people she knew. And so right from that first meeting, there are a couple of them that kind of had their head around the concept and took responsibility for that first gathering. So they kind of divvied it up right from the start rather than it all resting on someone. Um, the other question in the chat here, Jess, for you specifically, you know, what sparked that motivation to, to get started as someone that's just done it recently? Um, I would say that some of that is, is um, honestly, I just moved into the area. I didn't really have many friends in the area um, or many connections. And I thought rather like at the moment I can't play sport. So there's not, you know, <laughs> it's try trying to find friends essentially and people that had like-minded interests um, is, yeah, sounds almost a bit lame, but it's not. It's been, yeah, been really good. Yeah. Dennis, do you want to go through your last little slides there? Yeah. Um... Feel free to, you know, wax stuff in the chat if as you go as well. Yeah, and... 
if any of you still had some questions, uh, we will try and see if we can bring these things together. But if not, we do have some of the resources um, is what I wanted to share on our website. So if you have a, um, a chance to look at some of these resources, um, I'm sure that they are easy to understand and to guide you as well. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us and you can talk to us. And whenever you feel prepared or ready that you think you have, you know, a small little idea that you would like to try out um, in your community, in your street, yeah, you can register your interest using the form that we have on our website. And then we will start following up with you and trying to see how we can support you again. And as we already know that some of us are already street champions, like we do have some more um, who have joined us today. Uh, so I really thank you for spending time with us. Um, and we do hope that, hope that the other street champions can share their stories uh, so that we can use that as an example to encourage others to do something similar. Um, just going to go to the next slide. Um, yeah, I would like to finish off saying that, uh, to wrap up today's session, saying thank you to our speakers. Um, they have dedicated their time today to share the experiences. And as we have heard now that all of these things have started with a small idea, and then, um, you know, people came along, um, there was something or the other, you know, to support them. Um, so likewise, we want to share that at the Port Environment Center, we are here to support you um, with these ideas. And if you're unsure about something, um, yeah, just feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we are available. We have our own website. We are on Facebook, Instagram. So whatever you're comfortable with, or even if you want to send us an email, uh, I've just put the email address there. Um, yeah, you can directly um, just send us an email. And I'd also like to say that keep an eye out for events and activities that we have at the center. Many of them are linked or that might help you, you know, to get connected with others in the area. So that might be a good starting point for you where you can meet people, talk to people. So keep an eye out for those as well. Um, yeah. Is there anything else, Emma, that you'd like to add? No, I think... I think it's just such a beautiful crossover when you can kind of bring community and environment together. You know, we're in a pretty big crunch time when it comes to the state of our natural world and, you know, how we are impacting it as people. Um, and we're also in a crunch time of people being, you know, lonely and isolated and having gone through that experience of COVID. So I feel like they come together so nicely. Um, and I think a lot of people are open to connecting with people locally and it's kind of trying to weave that environmental focus in there too that you know why not if we're doing something together let's also make it something that benefits our local environment um and that can look totally different it doesn't have to just be plants and native animal uh, you know supporting wildlife and local biodiversity it could be you know how we use resources and how we share and um you know reduce our consumption I don't know, it can go in all different directions depending on what people are interested in. Yeah, and there's some beautiful examples and fabulous people out there making this stuff happen, which is so cool to see. Yeah, that's all I have to say. And thanks, Janice, for all your work in this space. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just letting everyone know that I will be sharing a survey through an email um, after the session. I can even pop it now in the chat. So if you'd like to just complete this short survey, to let us know um, of how useful the session was or if there's something that we can support you with in the ideas or the projects that you have, you feel free to reach out to us through the survey or as I said, even through an email. Um, yeah, and thank you very much everyone for joining us today. Um, thank you so much and have a good night. Yeah, um, while, you're, while you're clicking through that survey, I mean, a lot of the talk presenters tonight talked about having to work with their local councils. Um, so at the Environment Centre, we're not local government, um, you know, we're our own little organisation, um, but local councils can be, you know, really useful points of assistance. Most councils have people in that kind of community development type space. They get really excited when there's community members that want to make stuff happen. Um, and, you know, there might be some red tape and some barriers you've got to kind of work through, but your local council especially if you live, you know, further afield from Port Adelaide, um, is a really good starting point too. Anyway, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emma and Janice for inviting 
me to speak and let people know 